Hi. Uh, spiritual Parenting Bible Study. And today we're going to be talking about not a one of us is perfect as parents. It's really hard. <laughs> uh, if anybody tells you that parenting is easy, um, they're lying. <laughs> they may not think they're lying, but they're lying. So we're going to get into that and uh, then we're going to, I'm going to pray first and then we'll, we'll get going. Jesus, I thank you for today. It's a beautiful day outside. I thank you for all the parents uh, and all the people that aren't even parents that would be watching this today, God, because the reality is, is we all have stress. Uh, we all have busy schedules. Um, but as long as we realize that you're in control, then it'll be okay. Um, bless the words that come out of my mouth today, God. Help, help somebody that needs this today with this Bible study. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> once again, uh, while I was in prayer this week, this is what the Lord laid on my heart to talk about, to discuss. So, here we go. Um, I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 139. And if you're new to using the Bible, it's in the Old Testament. And it's actually one of the biggest ones in there. So, if you're flipping through trying to find it, you're going to find it pretty quick. Because, like I said, it's, it's big. It's one of the biggest books, if not the biggest book. So, um, again, I feel like I'm just supposed to be very transparent, um, and be honest, as honest as I can with you guys today. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I work full time in ministry, mind you, um, and I'm not perfect, and I know I'm not perfect, and I was really struggling with that this week. I don't know if it was because I was around a bunch of other pastors and preachers and all that, but, you know, I was missing my dad, I was missing my husband, I was missing my little boys because I was gone for a couple days, and just, I can't stand it when I have that inadequate feeling, um, and I have to just get on in my prayer closet and just pray and ask Jesus, because I know it's a lie from, you know, the enemy and I hate that but let's be honest we all go through it we all deal with it some of us more than others um I don't deal with it often but when I do it's just it's just like this heaviness and I can't stand that I, I'm a joyful type of person so anyway I, I was praying and the Holy Spirit led me to Psalm 139 so I'm not sure if I should read the chapter first, or if I should actually read my word for you. Um, let me read the word that I felt the Lord laid on my heart. I'll read that to you first, and then we'll go over the scripture verses in Psalm 139. Okay? All right. Um, this all stems from the scripture verse that you knit me together in my mother's womb. Okay, we're not perfect as parents. We're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. That's, we're human. So this is what the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. So I'll try and read it for you so you understand it. He was talking to me, but he also referred, you know, this is for other people that need to hear this. So put yourself in what I'm reading, okay? You are a human person. You are going to get tired, worn out, and your nerves are going to get frazzled. It's human. No one person has it all perfect. You just have to remember to let me or Jesus comfort you, refresh you, and let you rest in me, Jesus, when it gets too hard. You're not bad, you're human. Just don't let it make you sin. That's the key right there. If it does though, 
You ask for forgiveness and don't do it again. Stop beating yourself up for things you cannot control. Try and find the humor in the situation. Try and find a lesson learned from the situation. Even if someone dies, like if it's bad as bad can get, and someone dies because of whatever the situation is, it's out of your control. Let it go. You can do it because I, the Lord, give you the strength, the joy, the perseverance, and the love to keep going. Fill in the blank with your name right here. For me, it's Sarah. Sarah, I've got you in the palm of my hand, and I love you. And this is the Lord speaking. You are special to me. You are my masterpiece. You are going to make it because I say so. I created you. Oh. <laughs> it's a word that the Lord gave me the other day. And so I wrote it all down and I felt like I was supposed to share that today for those of you that would be feeling, you know, you're tired, you're worn out, you're stressed, your nerves are shot, whatever it is that's going on. I don't know, but you needed that today. Let's tackle Psalm 139. This is good stuff. Psalm 139, verse 1. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. That's true. He knows us. He made us. <laughs> you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. If you think about that, it's true. I, I can't comprehend all the knowledge that God has. But it's comforting to know that since he does, he knows what's going on in here and he knows what's going on in here. And I think the coolest thing is that he cares. He cares about the hurts and the um, insecurities and whatever's going on, you know, in your heart or in your life as a parent. And you think, God, I'm not doing a very good job. But the reality is you are. If you're trusting in him, and you're letting him guide you and lead you. That's a good job. Where did I stop? Verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? <laughs> if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn... If I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Here's the verse that spurred all this for me. Verse 13. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Let me tell you, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, I don't know who it is. But you matter. What you're doing matters. Yes, it's hard some days, but it matters. If you've got a kiddo you're trying to raise, huh, you matter. And as long as you're not out partying and abandoning those kids, then I'd say you're probably doing a good job. 
If you're there and you're present and you're trying and you're giving everything you got for those kiddos, you matter and you're doing a good job. Do you understand that? They need, they need you. Period. Verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in, that, in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me. This is so cool. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Do you get that? You're not a mistake. You're doing the best you can and just keep relying on Jesus. Rest in him. And it dawned on me today <clears throat> while I was in having my prayer time. Not everybody can come into a church every single day like I can and sit down and have you know, 45 minutes to an hour of sitting and praying and just complete solitude and reverence to the Lord. Not everybody can, but I'm blessed that I get to. But you, if you can get your 10 or 15 minutes in alone somewhere, even if you're driving in the car, just resting in the Lord. That's what you need. That's what you got to do. I'm just trying to be an encouragement because I think so many times we just beat ourselves up because we don't think we're good enough. We don't think what we're doing is a good enough job. Um, women, women just beat the snot out of themselves mentally and emotionally because they compare themselves to other women and that is so stupid. I don't know why women do that to themselves. God created you as you. Be you. And ask God to help you be the best you he wants you to be. When I pray for my boys, I pray that God will help them do what they were created to do. Not what the kid sitting in the next de desk was created for. For, but what Isaac was created to do, what Luke was created to do. What are you created to do? If you're a mom or a dad or a guardian, that's part of what you were created to do is to do the best job you can. And if you're trying, then you're doing a good job. I wish I'd go through this video and hug you. Because sometimes we just need a hug. I needed one of my dad's hugs this week. I can't get it. <laughs> Because he's in heaven. And I miss him. But I'll be okay. Because I get a hug from God. And that works too. <laughs> That's It's even better. So you are good enough. You're doing a good enough job. And you're human. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. But like the word said, just don't let it allow you to sin. Okay? Grab a hold of it and go, okay, I can't control it. I got to give it to God and I've got to rest in the Lord and do that. I don't remember where I stopped. I praise you because I'm working on Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. It blows me away that God knew us before we were even here. He ordained it. He knew it. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. It's a lot. I can't, we can't count them. <laughs> That's so cool. 18. Were I to count them, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. 
Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Here's where we got to stick to it right here. Verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense, offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Lead us, Lord, as parents, as guardians, as spouses, as friends, as co-workers. Lead us. Let us hear your Holy Spirit. And let us do what you tell us to do. I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit right now, so. Um, my husband had a ball game last night. His, his varsity team played. And um, I wasn't going to share this, but I feel like I'm supposed to, so I will. There was a... When we got there, me and, me and Isaac actually showed up. Luke was already with him. And um, there was a lady there. She had no affiliation with the team. She didn't have kids playing or anything, but she had a little boy that was playing at the playground. And he had told her that he wanted to stay and watch the baseball guys play baseball. So she let him. And immediately I felt in my spirit, love her. Okay, I'll love her. All I wanted to do was just sit and relax and chill out and just watch the guys play baseball. But she had a five-year-old little boy with her, and he was a doll. And he was talking up a storm to me, so I was talking back. And um, I actually enjoyed him a lot. His mom, I talked with her a long time and um, made friends with him, really come to find out that he was learning about Jesus and church and we talked about it. I pulled out my Bible and believe it or not she had one in her her bag and so we were chatting and talking about it and I showed her the Jesus app and the Fire Bible for Kids app and all this stuff and we were talking and I felt in my spirit the Lord said you know she just needed somebody to love her to love her, to talk to her to speak you know, have adult conversation with. Um, and I wonder sometimes moms that have younger kids, they just need somebody to listen, to interact with, to love them. Because there's so many times when you don't feel like you're lovable or you got too much on your plate, you're too busy, you got to get to the next thing. And, um, I just have to listen and rest in what the Lord has to say and what he wants you to do. And for this particular lady, I, I believe that she was blessed. She said she was. Well, she didn't actually say, I've been blessed by this. But she asked me if we, if we come there often. And I said, well, I don't. But he does, my husband, because they practice there all the time. It's got a great play, playground for the kids. And, and I told her, I said, but if we're, you know, if we come back, I'll look for you and the little boy and... I'm not saying their names because, you know, I don't have, I can't tell you who they are. That wouldn't be right. But I don't know their last names, but I got their first names. And um, she just needed love. I could tell. She just needed somebody to look past the exterior and just love her the way Jesus would love her. And we did. Isaac played with the little boy a lot. They played hard and they played fun. And then he'd come over and watch the game for an inning or two. And then he'd go back and play. And she and I just chatted and talked. And, you know, like normal people, it was like we'd known each other for a long, long time. So, if you feel like what you're doing doesn't matter, it does. And it matters to God. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. You matter. And you're doing a good job, Mom and Dad, Guardian, whoever you are. You're doing 
good. Don't give up. Don't stop. You're God's creation. And he loves you. And he cares about you. He cares about all those little details that are going on in your mind that you don't understand why you can't get a hold of it. If you can't control it, let him have it. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Let me pray and then I'm going to go. Jesus, I thank you. And I ask you, God, that this will sink into the hearts and lives of those that need it today. Help them know that they matter, that they're here for a reason and here for a purpose, and not to give up and to keep on going. And the only reason why they feel that way is because the enemy is lying to them. Help them to listen to you, I pray. And I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, that he back off. Because you've got to work for them to do. You created them. You knew about them, Lord, before they were even put here on this earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your vast knowledge. We praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a great day. And Lord willing, I'll see you next week.